Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to the 43rd Xamarin Android tutorial. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at info windows, okay? So an info window is something that we can create from a view and then inflate it whenever the user clicks on our marker, okay? So here's an example of an info window. When I click on this, a view comes up that I was able to customize myself and then inflate, okay? so. This gives us a really good uh, ability to create to provide some uniqueness to our own applications by making custom views. Okay, so info windows can be really helpful, and in this video we're going to be work we're going to be working on making something like this. Okay, and what we're going to do after, so this is going to be a continuation of the previous video. So if you haven't watched that one, we do have some code in here from the previous videos before this. So do make sure to watch those if you want to catch up on these on this right here okay so the first thing we want to do guys is we want to come into our layout folder okay we want to create a new axml file okay and this axml file is going to represent our entire view that the info window is going to hold okay so let's come into here and let's make an android layout and we'll just call it info underscore window And it's just going to be a simple view that we're going to create, but the point is to get the to get the example across of how you can create a, a view and then inflate it in the proper method and then put that inside of the info window. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create an image. Okay, so our image view is going to go is going to rest inside of our layout, our linear layout. And here we'll just give it a few properties. Okay. And then we're going to give it a weight of 50. And then finally our source, actually we'll wait on that. So right now it's going to have a weight of 50. So it's going to take, it's going to be inside of this linear layout. Okay guys. And it's going to stack horizontally. Everything's going to stack horizontally inside of this layout. Okay. So this is going to be our image view. And then alongside of it is going to be another, another linear layout that has text views inside of it. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that over since we've gone over something like this many, many times already. So, in an effort not to waste any of your guys' time, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that over, okay? So what this is, guys, is basically just a linear layout that stacks three text views on top of each other, and then the image view, which is outside of this linear layout, is stacked side by side. So this and this are stacked left to right inside of another linear layout, okay? And a few things that I'll need to do with the parent is first add the weight sum. And I'm going to add a minimum width of 700. So that's gonna make it, that's gonna force it to stretch out a little bit. Okay. And then finally, I'm just gonna add a lighter background color. Okay. Alrighty, so it looks like we're, we're pretty much there. So we just need to add the source of the image now to our to our uh, actual image view, okay? So delete that one. I'm gonna come into here and add an existing file. Okay, I'll add that. So what we wanna make sure guys is Xamarin is a little weird when we have a dash, we'll get a weird error and it will not compile. Okay. So, uh, that's kind of weird. It's, it's like, a it's just a weird error that you get. And if that happens to you, so if you do have a dash inside of the drawable folder, a hyphen, make sure you get rid of that. Okay. So I'm just going to rename it, but a couple of times I've, I've been a little just lost on the, why am I getting this weird error? And it really is, pretty 
pretty uh, ambiguous why I'm getting it and it was because it ended up being a, a hyphen inside of it. So make sure you always get rid of that if there is one. Okay, so now that being said, let's come into our image view and we'll come down here to the properties and we'll set the source to the image that is here. Okay, and this could be really just any any image you like. I'm just gonna use the Xamarin uh, logo just for the heck of it. And that should do it guys. So we should now be able to, to see something that looks similar to this, okay? And what we're gonna do with this now guys is we're going to go into our code and we're going to actually inflate this into our view, okay? But first we need to do something else, okay? And that is first we need to set the Winfo in window adapter, okay? So we, we'll do mmap and we'll do set info window adapter, okay? So this is going to be that it's, we need to set an adapter for it, okay? Which is going to be an interface, a class that, that implements this interface. And then that's gonna take a few methods, of course. So we're gonna pass it this, okay? Since this is going to be what's gonna implement the, we'll go back for a second to show you. That's gonna, it's gonna need to take an I info window adapter. Okay, so we'll pass it this, and then we'll come up to our class, this, in this case, <laughs> and then we will, implement the i info window adapter okay so now that we are implementing that we need to right click and implement interface okay and when we do that two methods will be created for us okay that we need to implement and one of them is get info window and the other is get info contents okay so get win info contents is only called when get info window returns null, okay? So we're not gonna return null, we're actually gonna return a view. So in this method, we can just leave blank, or we can actually just return null in this case, and then after that, we really just don't do anything, okay? So this is the method that we're gonna concentrate on is get info window, okay? And what it asks for in return is a view. So that's the view that we have created, and we're going to go ahead and inflate that view now, okay? So inflating a view, is something that we take an entire layout, okay? So we don't do a find view by ID because now we're taking the entire AXML file and we're inflating it with a layout inflator, which is what we need. And then that returns us a view, okay? So we'll do view view equals layout inflator, okay? Which an activity has a property layout inflator, so use that and you do dot inflate and then it asks for the layout, the resource that it, you want to inflate, okay? So then we'll just do resource layout info window, okay? And then we'll do null for the view groups. So there is no view group that the root, that it's not gonna be attached to any of the root. And then we'll do just do false here, okay? So what that's gonna do guys is that's gonna return this entire thing right here, okay? So this entire thing, it's gonna return it and that way, when then we're once we get that, come into here, and we'll return it. That error will go away, and all is well. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this, guys, and make sure that it's working the way we expect it to. And then after that, we're going to go in and we'll actually customize it a little more and get a little deeper into changing like the the text views and stuff inside of here. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Make sure it's working properly. All right, so what we should expect to see is something when we click on the marker, okay? And there it is, okay? So it inflated our view and it put it inside of the window, the info window, okay? So now what we could do, guys, is we can change these generic text views like name, address, and number to something that is more relevant to our users, okay? So if we're grabbing this based on like the position of a latitude longitude or grabbing it from a database, Whatever the case may be, we can take we can take these views and we can uh, give them values that are are more specific to our application. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of an example of that right now. Okay, so what we want to do, guys, is just do a find view by ID. Okay, so once we have that view, we can do a find view by ID, and we'll do resource .id txt, and then we'll do name. And then text, we'll do Xamarin, 
And then we'll do the same thing for the other two text views. And all I'm doing right here is just hard setting some values, but I hope you get the idea of the fact that you can kind of really go crazy and make this a little more dynamic by having the ability to change this on runtime, okay? So it's 394 Pacific. Have a new, and then last one, just some other information like hours. Change the text of that. Something like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, guys. So with that, now it's a little more dynamic. So now if we run that we're gonna be able to see that we can now, we will be able to look at this and it'll say these, this stuff rather than, you know, name, address, and hours. So a little more specific info for us. Now, now that's possible. Now the only thing that you can't do, and it's too bad because what, what happens guys is when this is run, let's kind of look a little deeper into this. So what happens guys, when this is run, Rand, what happens is the view is painted on, okay? So this actual view is not live, okay? So what happens is this view is painted on by a canvas, okay? So it, the canvas paints this view onto the screen, okay? So what I'm getting at is the fact that you can't add any click events to this, okay? So it's actually recommended by Google not to add any kind of events to it like like buttons or image buttons because there's no click events for it because really the button is no better than the than the text view okay because of the fact the fact that it's just drawn on and it's not an actual button at that point it's simply just a bitmap okay so with that but we can do one thing we can add an event to the entire view okay so whether we click here or here we won't be able to to add a click event to a specific area but we can add a click event to the entire view, okay? So that is a little better than not being able to do nothing with it, okay? So let's go ahead and do that right now, guys, is we'll add a click event to the entire view that when the user clicks on something, we'll be able to do something else with it, okay? Okay, so what we need to do is first come over here into our on map ready method, and we need to add another listener, okay? So we'll do mmap dot on info set on info window click listener okay and then we'll also pass it this because we'll also implement the i on info window click listener okay come up to the top on info window click listener okay we'll import that Kind of a little bit of a tongue twister right there. So, and then this will now suffice. Okay, so now we'll need to come up here and we'll need to right click and implement the interface for it. Okay, and it just adds one method to implement and that's on info window click. Okay, so this is called whenever the, mark, whenever the info window on the marker is clicked and it passes in the marker whose info window was clicked. Okay, so what we could do is we can do something just like a console.write line just to confirm that it is being clicked. And we can do something like info window has been clicked. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and make sure that it's working properly. So what this, what this is doing guys is we set an info window click listener to, li to listen to any clicks on the window info or the info window and then it comes into here and it says hey an info window has been clicked here's the marker that it belongs to and do something with it okay so we can probably take like the marker the markers latitude and longitude or something like that and to make it more dynamic and to show to 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 implement some different functionality depending on the position of the marker or something like that so you get the idea All right, so now we click on our info window. We should see that we have some more specific information now. And now we should be able to click on the 
info window, which down here at the console, it is coming up and says info window clicked, okay? So the event is in fact firing, and at that point we can do whatever we want with it, okay? So that is something that, like I said, like like the, the remember the, the view right here, this info window is simply just drawn on so that is why we cannot add any sort of click events to specific stuff like buttons inside of it. However, we can add a click event to the entire view, then we can do something else with, with that view, okay? So there you have it, guys. That's the basic runaround of info windows and how to use them. And just as something to get you guys going in, in that direction and really come up with probably some a lot, a lot better of a uh, view Look, better looking view than this one, of course, but I uh, hope you get the idea of this and take it from there to, to add some custom views into your info windows. All right. So in the next video, we're going to be talk, taking a look at polylines and drawing, actually drawing on the maps to give your users some visual feedback. Okay. So that's where stuff gets really interesting is when you can start drawing some polylines and to join shapes and doing some cool stuff with it. Okay. So thanks for watching guys. And until next time.